will be discussing performance measurement in this centralized organization which is related to responsibility accounting okay now why decentralized organization what are its benefits these are the uh, low level decisions will often be based on better information why because uh, they are normally the ones exposed to daily activities they are the workhorses and the top management can concentrate on the strategy uh, at the same time the lower level managers they can gain experience in decision making which would lead to their job satisfaction now of course if there is a um, benefit there would be a uh, disadvantages that would be uh, since if if uh, here the, the low level management are the ones involved in the decision making sometimes they forget to look at the big picture yeah uh, and and uh, if you miss the big picture there will be a mismatch with that of uh, the strategy set by the top level management at the same time uh, syempre, yung coordination it it may uh, be sometimes lacking. Kasi you have the liberty to make decision. You, you, you have autonomy kasi, no? That's the tendency. And, uh, kita nyo, class, so may not be those of the organization in terms of objective. Kaya nga, ang, ang major uh, focus ng responsibility accounting is goal congruence and and why it would be difficult to spread no yung innovative uh, ideas because uh, you are at the at the bottom level of the organization uh, dito kasi uh, mostly the type of the decisions you'll be making are uh, program decision wherein uh, it involves your daily activities so uh, the innovative ideas would be minimal uh, in terms of how can the processes be improved and since this is all about responsibility accounting if you notice so tatlo na lang nakalagay dito uh, wala na yung responsibility accounting although pwede nyo naman din siyang idagdag again so for our experience point identify uh, what would be our evaluation scheme or performance measure um, uh, give each one for its of the center okay so ano uli ang crucial sa, sa responsibility accounting when we are looking at uh, centers we have to be able to have a defined uh, evaluation measure or key performance indicator and as a review your cost center take note the term control you're the one making decisions with it, the cost that you're going to incur then if it is a profit center you're looking at both cost and revenue okay so we'll have exercises on determining whether it is a cost center, profit center, and investment center. And uh, you have three items that you have to influence in terms of its uh, uh, activities, cost, revenue, and capital outlay or investment if it is an investment center. Now, why return on investment? Because this would evaluate the investment center. Although there are a lot of uh, there are other uh, you, hindi pala other but when you use the return on investment uh, pwede kasing ano ba ang interpretation yun ang investment. In this particular case our return on investment we made use of the 
average operating asset. So what we have already. Okay? And how uh, this would contribute for you to be able to earn your operating income, which in this case we interpreted uh, as the earnings before interest and taxes. Okay, so what would constitute my average operating asset? This would be your current asset, no, up to your inventory, and your property, plant, and equipment, and other productive assets utilized for your um, operations. And why are we going to use net book value versus the gross value with your um, plant property and equipment because we have to update no yung we have to know the value today the estimated value today because it had been utilized before already para naman mas malapit sa katotohanan yung ginagamit nating value considering that the figures that we are using is historical in nature it relates to the past diba and uh, your return on investment can also be used uh, or can also be computed using margin and turnover. Remember because margin is a profitability ratio. If it is profitability ratio, then we're looking at effectiveness. Turnover is what? Activity ratio. And when you talk about activity, it is about efficiency. So, it's better if you're going to use your margin and turnover because you'd look at the contribution of the effectiveness and the efficiency in order for you to achieve your goal. And this is a sample. No? We have your net operating income, your average operating asset. Pwede naman, ang gawin lang natin ay ano, 30 divided by 200. But what we're going to use is uh, margin multiplied by turnover. Kasi pag, ayan o, pag tinanbo, o di yun din yun. Pag kinansaw mo yung sales, diba o, it will also be net operating income divided by the average operating asset. So the result will be 15%, 6% for the margin and 2.5 times for the turnover. And so we need to uh, determine anong problem dito that the manager invests 30,000 that increases sales by by to ha 35,000 while increasing your operating expenses by 15,000. So let's take a look what happened. No? Uh, ano mangyayari dyan? It should be in this case, you have 21.8%. So with the uh, changes, it increases from 15 to 21.8%. So there are criticisms of return on investment, and that is uh, in the absence of balance scorecard, um, you may not know how to increase your return on investment. And managers may inherit a lot of committed costs which they have no control of. And the managers can have a, may ever wait a return on investment uh, and rejecting a profitable investment opportunities. That's why aside from return on investment, you would be looking at residual income. Okay? Residual income will compute for peso. If if, kasi pag return it will be on a percent in a ratio on a percentage basis. And when you talk about residual income, we have to know the net operating income uh, above your minimum return on operating asset. And and how can we do that? You have to determine your minimum required rate of return of which the computation is based on the cost of capital. When your cost of capital comprises your, uh, what have you utilized, no? the uh, financing, in order for you to support your uh, normal operation. And uh, how we 
compute for residual income, we still use the average operating asset, then your minimum required of return. You would be computing it using the model for the cost of capital. Okay? Then your net operating income uh, will be also utilized and whatever you have computed with the average operating asset multiplied by the minimum required rate of return will comprise your residual income. And the sample will be, you have 100,000 as operating asset, you have a required return of 20%, and you, your current earnings more is 30,000. So what will be our residual income? We have 10,000 because we use the required rate of return. That would be uh, your minimum required of return is 20. You deduct it with your actual income. So your residual income is 10,000. So since it has a personal value, this encourages managers to make profitable investment that would be rejected by managers using return on investment. So at least you have a balancing tool no, with your performance evaluation another would be a sample for your return on investment your division has a net operating income of 60 average operating asset of 300 with the required rate of return of 15 percent let's take a look if they were able to meet the required rate of return of 15. in this case you have 20 percent so you can uh, say that the unit, the division manager was able to achieve no, the key performance indicator. Now, this one we are going to uh, determine no, uh, if it can operate, it can generate additional net operating income of 18,000 per year uh, because uh, you have 63,000 as your net operating income operating asset of 300 and uh, you are going to evaluate if the additional investment of 100 would have additional of 18,000 and in this particular case the return on investment it doesn't increases no because uh, it is 19.5. Saan ang galing yung 20%? O, saan klas ang galing yung 20%? Do you know? Do you have an idea? O, alam nyo na kung saan ang galing. Nako, hindi alam kung saan ang galing. And that would be 60 divided by 300. Ito yung dati, diba? Eh, Gusto niya na uh, malaman kung okay ba na magkaroon ng additional investment. Dahil makikita niyo naman, 19.5, bumaba siya. Diba? Okay. So, how about the next one? We need to compute for, ano sabi dito? The company's required rate of return is 15. And kanina kung ginamit lang natin yung return on investment, i-reject -re natin yun, diba? O, tingnan natin kung ang gagamitin natin ay uh, 15%. Kung 15%, eh, syempre, higher na siya. Kasi kanina, uh, we, we use 60 divided by 300. Pero, uh, this, the company had said that their required rate of return is 15. So, mas mataas yung 18%. Kasi 18 divided by 100,000. That is, uh, this is the additional cost. This is the additional uh, benefit. So, let's determine the residual income. No? Uh, with the same scenario that you have 60,000 and 300,000 and uh, your required rate of return is 15 as specified before 
and see how much of residual income? 15,000. If our residual income is positive, then you can consider pushing through with the project or with the investment. No? And uh, would it generate 18,000 per year? Okay, let's see. Your net operating income is 78 because you have additional 60 plus 18. No? And you have from 300, you invested 100, so that would be 15% of 400. So you have 60. So it increases 3,000 in the residual income. Right? Okay. Now, what is the major disadvantage of residual income? It's difficult to use if iba iba yung size ng depression. Just tignan nyo dito, yung susunod. Uh, operating asset nito, 100, ito, 1M. Using the same required rate of return, definitely the residual income would be higher with a unit with a higher operating asset. Diba? So, hindi nyo, yun lang yung hindi nyo pwedeng gawin pagka of different sizes siya. Kasi, nahirap pag-comparing, no? You, you should know uh, that the size matters pagka sa residual income. Okay. Now, let me stop at this point, no? Let's continue uh, with the discussion with that of uh, delivery cycle time, throughput time, and manufacturing cycle time. Okay. Thank you. Hope uh, you have already um, a more in-depth understanding of the responsibility centers and your performance measures. Okay, thank you and good day.